Previously, I showed you how to run a simple Blinky program on the Raspberry Pi Pico using MicroPython. In this episode, I'm going to take it a step further and show you how to run some code found on the internet and use it to read temperature data from a sensor. There are a number of ways to read data from sensors using microcontrollers, but one of the most popular is the Inter-Integrated Circuit, or I2C protocol. It uses two digital I.O. lines, one for the clock and the other for data. For our purposes, the controller is the Pico, and the peripherals are the sensors. I2C allows us to connect several sensors at once to a controller using just one I2C bus. In some instances, we can even have several controllers, but that's a little advanced for what we want to do. The clock and data lines are open drain configuration, which means that we need to have pull-up resistors on both lines. However, we often do not need to worry about this if we're using pre-made breakout boards for the sensors. The actual protocol can be a bit complicated, so we won't go into the details. However, I highly recommend reading this great SparkFun tutorial if you'd like to learn more about how I2C works. The best place for learning about commands in MicroPython is docs.micropython.org. Just about everything you need for MicroPython should be listed here. You'll see that they have a list of officially supported boards, which means you'll likely find some variances among the boards. I'm hoping to see the Pico listed here soon. Let's search for I2C and click on machine.i2c as that's the module we'll be using. Here, you can see the available I2C method functions that are part of the I2C class. You can create an initial I2C object, set a frequency, scan the bus, and send and receive data. It's pretty straightforward to use I2C with MicroPython, but learning to actually read data from a sensor can quickly get complicated. For this demo, we'll be using one of my favorite sensors, the Bosch BME280. It's a 3-in-1 temperature, humidity, and pressure sensor. We just care about temperature for now, though. Most I2C devices will have a datasheet that tell you how to communicate with the device. Some are pretty easy. Send the address of the device, followed by a register address, and it will send back the data in that register. Others, like this BME280, can get quite complicated. There may be setup involved and lots of registers on the sensor to read from and write to. Also, you sometimes have to perform some fancy math to convert raw readings into usable data, like getting the measurement in degrees Celsius. And some sensors will require special calibration to ensure that it's giving accurate results. However, we don't need to worry about that part if we're just going to get some data that's good enough for now. If you want to get data that's good enough for basic measurements, I recommend starting with other people's code, assuming you can find some for your sensor. We'll use someone else's BME280 library later to make this effort much easier. The Pico datasheet has a fantastic pinout diagram that we'll use to figure out how to connect our sensor. Scroll down to page 5 and zoom in. Here you can see that we have two I2C buses to choose from, 0 and 1. Almost all of the GPIO pins can be used as an I2C peripheral. We just have to configure them as such in code. I'll use pins 16 and 17 on the bottom right side of the board. These correspond to I2C bus 0, SDA, and SCL lines. Note that we will also need 3.3 volts and ground to power our BME280 breakout board. Here are the pins that we need to connect between the Pico and the BME280. Note that I'm using an Adafruit BME280 breakout board. I'll connect a wire from 3V3 out on the Pico to V in on the BME280 board. I'll also connect ground to, well, ground. Physical pin 21 on the board is GPIO 16 on the chip, and I'll connect that to SDI, which is the I2C data line. Physical pin 22 on the board is GPIO 17, and I'll connect that to SCK, which is the I2C clock line. And that's all we need to do. Note that SCK, SDO, and SDI on the breakout board are labeled for the SPY protocol, but we'll be using the BME280 in I2C mode. The SDO line acts as an address select. On this board, it's pulled up to 3.3 volts by default, which means the BME280 will have an I2C address of hex 77. If we connect SDO to ground, this changes the address to hex 76. This can allow you to put more than one BME280 on the same bus or avoid address conflicts with another sensor. 
we'll leave SDO unconnected so the address will be hex 77. I've connected the BME 280 breakout board to the Pico just as I showed. Assuming you followed the instructions in the last episode and loaded the MicroPython UF2 file onto the Pico, we can just plug the Pico into our computer. No need to re-upload the UF2 file. Let's open Thani. Make sure that the Raspberry Pi Pico is selected as our target board. We'll create a quick program to scan the I2C bus for devices and print their addresses. Let's start by importing the machine module. We'll create a new I2C object. The first parameter is the I2C bus number. Remember that we're using bus 0. Next, we'll assign the pins. SCL is connected to pin 17, which we can create by calling machine.pin open parentheses 17 close parentheses. We do the same thing for SDA, which is connected to pin 16. The default frequency of the I2C bus is 400 kilohertz, which we'll leave for now. Next, we'll call the I2C scan function, which will return a list of addresses on that bus. We'll store that list in the device's variable. If the list is not empty, we will loop through each element in that list with a for in loop. We'll print the element to the console. Note that we need to convert the element, which is an I2C address, to hexadecimal format, as that's what I2C often uses. Let's run this program on our Pico. Assuming the BME280 is powered and connected correctly, it should print out its I2C address, which is hex 77. This verifies that the sensor is responding and will need that address for the next part. I recommend clicking File Save As and saving this file somewhere on your computer. It's a helpful little program that you can use to help you debug I2C devices in the future. Click Tools, Manage Packages. Search for BME280. Some of these packages are written for Python on the Raspberry Pi. We want a MicroPython version. This one from CatDog2 looks promising, so let's give it a shot. Before installing it, I recommend clicking on the homepage link to read more about it. The library claims it was written for the ESP8266, but I have a suspicion that it will work for the Pico. Don't assume it will though. Sometimes you'll come across libraries that are written for one particular board and it would take a lot of work to port it to another board. There's a simple example to get us started, which is good. Let's copy that example. We'll use it as a starting point. Back in Thani, click the Install button to install the library on the Pico board. Close out of the Package Manager and click File Open. When asked, select to view the files on the Pico. You should see that a lib folder has been created and it contains the bme280.py module that we just downloaded. Let's open it. It looks like the default address is hex 76, but we can supply a different address when creating this BME280 object. Also, you can get a sense of how the package manager works. It simply downloads any Python files for the module and saves them in the lib folder. That means if you find a library on the internet that's not listed in the package manager, you can simply copy the code to files in the lib folder. The module name will be the file name before.py. Let's create a new file and paste in the example code we found from the library's GitHub page. At the top, we see that the machine module was imported along with the BME280 module. Remember, this BME280 module is named for the BME280.py file that's saved in our lib folder on the Pico. The import BME280 line just imports all the code from that file so we can use it. It would be similar to copying the code in the library right here. We then declare an I2C instance as we did before. However, we need to modify this code to actually work with our I2C pins. So let's copy the I2C initialization line from our scan program and replace this line. The BME280 line creates a BME280 object and we pass it our I2C object. As we saw earlier, we need to change the address of the device. So we set the address to hex 77 as one of the parameters. Click File Save As and save it to the Pico as main.py. When you run it, it should print out the temperature, pressure, and relative humidity. We see that it's printed as a tuple, which means that we can just index into it to pull out one of the values. 
Now, let's import the uTime module so we can read from the sensor continuously. We'll add a while true statement and indent the print line with a tab. We want temperature, so let's use index 0 of the values tuple. Finally, we add a uTime.sleep function call of 0.5 seconds so that the measurements don't flood the output. We run this and we should see just the temperature reading being printed twice per second. Try lightly breathing on the sensor to see if you can get the temperature readings to rise. This should give you a good start to using sensors and other people's libraries with MicroPython. Next time, we're going to get a little more advanced and I'm going to show you how you can use the unique Programmable Input Output or PIO feature on the Pico. Happy hacking!